Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about nested for loops. So this is really important if you have some sort of 2D array or a similar data structure. Anytime you need to iterate through something that's a little bit more complex than just a straight line. The other completely practical purpose of nested for loops is to create cool pyramid or triangle shape structures. So yeah, that's actually a thing. I've gotten a lot of messages from people saying, oh, please, you gotta teach me how to do this. I can't figure it out. Why? I don't know, but if you go on the internet, you'll find lots of examples of this. So just to prove I'm not crazy, you can find tons of examples. This one's really nice and simple. It's just a triangle shape, but a lot of people wanna do the pyramids. And here's another one. It's on the side, which is a lot easier. The, the ones with the spaces here, that's gonna be a little bit more work because you got to worry about the spacing, but I'm sure you guys can hack something together after watching this video. And by the way, this video is of course sponsored by the Illuminati, link in the description. Guys, I'm kidding, haha. <laughs> The Illuminati did not sponsor this series. So go check out the real sponsor, Pramp. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, so let's get back into this. How are we going to create something like that? Well, first things first, let's just get rid of this output. That's just gonna clear the state. And what we're going to do is run the application, prove that nothing's happening, and you can see, voila, nothing happened. So what I want to do is I want to do another loop similar to this one where we count down from nine all the way down to zero. And that's going to happen 10 times, one time for each iteration of this outer for loop. So it's gonna look something like this. We'll create that body here, and then inside of the parentheses, we're going to initialize a new variable. By convention, it's often called K or J. I like K, I don't know, something about J's just, they just mess me up, I don't know. K is where it's at. Probably because my name's Caleb, you know, even though my name starts with a C, but I just, the, the feeling of the K just is much better. So if you're looking for a convention on which one to use, <laughs> I'm sure there's millions of debates online, but it really doesn't matter. We're just gonna go with K and we will set that equal to nine. And similar thing, we're gonna say as long as K is greater than or equal to zero, and then we'll say K minus minus. And then each iteration of this, we're going to output the number. So we'll say sys out, but we're gonna make one modification. We're not gonna use print line because that's just gonna spam a bunch of garbage in our console. We'll just use print and we'll pass in the value of K, but we're also going to pass in a space. Now when we run this bad boy, check this out. We get even more spam, but now it's all in one line. So we definitely improved our code. I'm just kidding here. We need to go down here and we need to add another line. We're just going to say sys out and leave this empty. Run this and look at that. So we're basically getting uh, 10, 10 iterations of 10 iterations. So each one of these is an iteration, <laughs> and then for each iteration of the outer loop, we get a copy of that. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. This loop here, that's what's making this. Then the outer loop is doing each one of these. So hopefully that's nice and clear. Maybe just get some practice writing out some of these yourself. If you're not typing this out yourself, you, sh you should probably go do that. All right, so now if we wanna do a triangle shape, we can definitely do that. So for example, if we wanted to count down as we go down, so instead of just having nine every time, we wanted to be nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, we could do that as well. So in order to do that, we can set K equal to the value of I. And you can see I starts at nine, but then it shrinks down to eight and so forth each iteration. So when we do this and we run this, we get this cool triangle shape. So the first iteration, we start at nine, next one we start at eight, and then we start at seven and so forth. So anytime you have this uh, staggered effect, the way people do that is they reference the outer variable inside of the inner loop. 
So that is how you do the most simple triangle structure. It's also going to get you some practice with working with nested for 